Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's release day, or maybe by the time this goes up, it might be the day after release day for Ixalan, which of course means it's time for us to crack open a box and see if we can get some sweet mythics, some of the good rares, some dinosaurs and pirates. Also, there's some sweet bonuses with Ixalan, so usually with sets when they first release wizards releases a buy a box promo but for ixalan wizards is changing things up instead of a buy a box promo you get a buy a box booster pack so first before we get to the box itself we're going to crack these open and i have heard some reports of some really sweet stuff in these packs you get standard rares you get foils i've heard of some really expensive standard cards coming out of these packs so i'm especially excited for this so this is kind of our bonus i guess since there's no masterpieces in the set. So let's see if we get lucky. So first off, we get a Bishop of Rebirth. All right, not super exciting. Uh, Channeler Initiate. Okay. Ooh, Cataclysmic Gearhulk. So we got three standard rares, or two standard rares, one standard mythic with the Cataclysmic. Ooh, wait, another standard rare, Blooming Marsh. Actually, that's a pretty good card to have. Uh, standard playable, modern playable, not bad for free bonus. Now we have our foils. We get a foil Gonti Lord of Luxury. Actually, not bad. Good EDH card. A foil Lord of the Accursed as our foil uncommon. Then we get two of these super sweet Rebecca Gay foil lands, which are just, oh, they're so beautiful. So two sweet foil lands and a Burning Suns avatar. So overall, like, not an insane pack for a uh, buy a box pack, but really. I mean, sweet Burning Suns Avatar, that's like our promo, I guess. We got a Mythic, we got the two lands, which are going to be, at some point, I think, pretty valuable. Also, Foil Lord of the Accursed, eh. Foil Gonti is sweet, Blooming Marsh, so not bad for just free value. Definitely better than just getting one random buy a box card from the set. So anyway, that's our buy a box pack, so let's actually get to the main event, the Ixalan booster box itself. So as I mentioned before, the big news here is we don't have any masterpieces in Ixalan, which means the value is going to be a little bit different. It means it's definitely possible to open a winning box without hitting the single best card in the set. So instead, we're going to be looking at a lot of like smaller chunks of value instead of trying to get one massive chunk of value, which is actually pretty sweet. I'm pretty happy about that. So pack number one from our Ixalan box. We'll pretty much just skip over the commons. Not really much to see in the common world. Start with the uncommons. There are a couple of good, I mean, there's some fine, like, Duress is a good playable card, Opt is worth a few cents, but we're not going to dig through all the Uncommons, it'd make the video way too long. Uh, uncommons, Imperial Lancer, eh, Lookout's Dispersal, very playable. Raptor Hatchling, rare is, Deep Root Champion, a spicy card, not sure it's a very, I don't know, it's not very valuable, but could end up seeing a bit of play. Pirate Token, not bad, the Menace Pirate. So, eh, I mean, I guess a reasonable pack to start with. Not anything, like, super exciting. But Deeper Champion could be sweet in, like, a Green Prowess-style deck. Miracle Grow. All right, get through these comments for pack number two. We have Duskborn Sky Marcher, Dark Nourishment, Tempest Caller, ooh, Tishana Voice of Thunder, Mythic number one, super sweet Commander Mythic. Uh, all right, so not a high value mythic, but a mythic's a mythic, and we will take it. And it's a really sweet card, it draws a ton of cards, so can't really complain when you open a mythic, even if it's not one of the good ones. The big winner, of course, is um, the dinosaurs. Actually, at rare and mythic, the most expensive cards are dinosaurs. Daring Saboteur as our rare, also Kite Sail Freebooter, not really worth much, but a reasonable uncommon. All right, so, so far, we've gotten merfolks, we've gotten pirates, we have not gotten any of the good dinosaurs, which we are hoping for. Uh, this pack. Rallying Roar, Perilous Voyage, Emissary of Sunrise. Oh, there it is! The single most valuable card in the set. The dinosaurs have arrived. Carnage Tyrant. That's the one we want to open. I mean, there's no masterpieces, which means... You're not going to get that huge chunk of, like, $40, $50 of value if you get lucky. So opening a Carnage Tyrant, the single best mythic in the set, is definitely a good start for us to maybe make our money back on this box, which would be pretty spectacular. Uh, the nice thing is there's a lot of rare value in the set. 
uh, Dusk Legion, Dreadnought, Trove of Temptation, Seer Squire, Regisar Alpha, Good Dinosaur, increasing in price on Magic Online. Uh, I don't know what it is in paper right now, but I assume like the first paper tournaments are this weekend, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Dinosaur decks and see some demand for those in the paper world as well. Definitely is a thing I'm looking out for to see how dinosaurs do once we get uh, real tournament results. Fern Rebirth, Stabbing Sailback, Raging Swordtooth, and Dowsing Dagger. These cards just look really sweet. Dowsing Dagger, of course, Sweet, Lost Veil, vale, even sweeter. Commander Staple, I really like the border. Almost makes me <laughs> miss the Masterpieces. Apparently, the black border was going to be the Masterpiece border, if they had done Masterpieces. I'm glad we still got to see the border, because it is it is a nice, clean border. It took some adjusting to it. First, I was like, eh, I don't know what I think, but I actually do like it. I do like it now. Ooh, there's an opt hiding in there. Worth a few cents. All right. Dinosaur Stampede. Dinosaur Overrun. Raging Swordtooth, number two. Bishop of the Bloodstained. Rootbound Craig. We will take lands all day, every day. They're not worth a ton, but they are worth enough that I'm never unhappy to open them. Plus, they're like... Just super playable. You just need a playset of each of those if you're going to play standard for the next two years. They're going to be in every deck in their colors. Emerging Growth, Inspiring Cleric, Dead Eye Quartermaster, Capola, Warden of Waves. Interesting. I think our tokens have been primarily treasure tokens, which makes sense because a lot of things make treasure tokens. Capola, eh, Merfolk just don't really have enough strength in standard right now. Could show up as like a one of in modern. In Merfolk decks, maybe, maybe, maybe. Heartless Pillage, Walk the Plank, not a bad uncommon. The best one we've opened so far. Glorifier of Dusk and Vanquisher's Banner. Just a casual all-star. It's going to show up in so many casual tribal decks, commander tribal decks. Will probably end up being worth a good bit of money like Coat of Arms eventually. Because if you're playing tribal, you're just going to play that card. It's very good. Uh, Alright, Storm Tamer Siren, another solid uncommon actually for the pirate deck, River Sneak, Savage Stomp, Un- whoa, oh, what is uncommon, uncommon, uh, <laughs> alright, so apparently, I heard rumors of this, apparently sometimes the foils are out of order, so we had our three uncommons, then we have a foil unknown shores, which, eh, whatever, and then our rare, which is Primal Amulet, since I can't say Amulet anymore. Flubs around into Primal Wellspring. Now we just need that draw seven and three more Primal Amulets, and <laughs> and our opponent will not know what hit them. And we will never win, but that's beside the point. <laughs> we will win eventually. That's the point of against the odds. Uh, all right, skim through this stuff. Ruthless Knave, Pillar of Origins, Lurking Chupacabra. Ooh, Growing Weights of Itlamog. All right. Uh, best rare in the set to open, I believe. Growing Rights at Iklamok flips around into, eh, just an upgraded Gaia's Cradle. Nothing to see there. I think it's like 12 bucks still. So we've got the best rare and the best mythic th uh, so far. So off to a good start. We're only a third of the way through this box. So not a whole lot to complain about. Plus we got the free value from the the pre-release, pre-release, the buy-a-box pack. Lookout's Dispersal, Grim Captain's Claw, Call to the Feast, Hwatli, the warrior poet. Ooh, do we have a foil? No foil. Well, Hwatli, another decent mythic. All the planeswalkers are like 10-ish bucks. So, so far, we've hit a bad mythic in Tishana. We've hit the best mythic in Carnage Tyrant and another good mythic in Hwatli. So, we are running pretty hot to start off with this box. Uh, super, super happy with where we're at. One third of the way through. And things could not be really going much better. Probably means... The rest of these packs are going to be disappointing, because so far, it has been super good. Deep Root Waters, Drover of the Mighty, Two Good Uncommons, Dead Eye Plunders, all right. Boom, Dead Eye Tracker, and Foil Taloni's Knight. Eh, all right. Decent Pirate, but not one of the high-end Pirates. As far as Pirates go, we're looking for Hostage Taker from a value perspective. But I think that Dead Eye Tracker will see a bit of play. Communion with Dinosaurs, going to see playing Dinosaur decks. It's a common, though, so it's not really worth anything. Sentinel Totem, Seeker Squire, Shaper of Nature, Emperor Vanguard. Eh, all right. So maybe the second third of the box is where we hit all the bulk rares. <laughs> kind of looking that way, but we can't really, we can't really complain because the first third of the box was so absurd. We actually 
Spell Pierce. We don't actually have to hit that much to make this a good box. Raider's Wake. Shaper in Nature. Number two. Ratcher Hapling. Hmm? Raptor Hatchling. Glacier Fortress. Oh, I see a foil. I see a foil. What do we get? Something good? Something good? Oh, just a Demystify. All right. Well, Demystify can blow up an enchantment. Well, like I said, we'll take all the lands we get, so don't mind opening Glacial Fortress. Solid, like, cost of a pack type rares. That's what you want to see. Those are the kind of cards. Hit a couple of high-end cards, hit the rares that are worth about the price of a pack, and you have a good box. Wily Goblin, Emergent Growth, Merfolk Branch Walker. Pretty good card. Ashes of the Horn. I think we got another... I think we got another foil. Ooh, is it a masterpiece? It's not a masterpiece. It's a Azekan Archer, which might actually be semi-playable as a sideboard card in standard. Ashes, eh, more graveyard hate, not particularly important at the moment. Well, let's keep going. I think we are approximately half of the way through our Ixalan box. First third, absurd. Second third so far, meh. But that's to be expected. They can all be absurd. Storm Tamer, Siren, good uncommon. Raider's Wake, Dark Nourishment, Tecatli's Honor Guard. Torpor Orb on a stick. Can do some sweet phage shenanigans and haunted or hunted shenanigans uh, with that card. More redundancy to go along with the other options we have. Could play some fun against the odd stuff with it. All right, what do we get here? Sheltering Light, Navigator's Ruin, Air Elemental, River's Rebuke. Makes you wonder why they ever printed Cyclonic Rift. Cyclonic Rift is just too good. Whenever you see a blue card like this, I mean, River's Rebuke looks really good. You get to bounce all of someone's permanents for just six mana, non-land permanents, but Cyclonic Rift does it to everyone who's not you for one more mana at instant speed. So I think Cyclonic Rift has just ruined those, <laughs> those kind of cards forever. No matter how good they are, they are not Cyclonic Rift. And that's the problem. Uh, all right. Pushing ahead... Looking for more value. More duresses. We're going to end up with a place out of duress, looks like. Grim Captain's Claw, Adanto's Vanguard, Bishop of the Bloodstain, Entrancing Melody. Cut you open modern. Some sweet Snapcaster shenanigans, stealing Tarmogoyfs and Death Shadows and whatnot. Maybe. Not very valuable, though. Yeah, this is the bulk rare third of the box. And then, hopefully, we get back to the insaneness for the last third. Sleek Schooner, Makeshift Mutation, Stormproof Spy. Ooh, Search for Escanta has been creeping up in value. Search for Escanta, of course, flips around into Escanta, the Sunken Ruins, with the super sweet borderlessness. Not a bad open. It's been, it's been creeping up there. So what else do we want out of this box, even? Like, things are just going so well. We could, I mean, another good mythic would be insane. Like a Jace, <laughs> double carnage tyrant. A good foil rare mythic would be just icing on the cake. A Ripjaw Raptor would not mind a Ripjaw Raptor. That's the other big rare that we haven't hit besides growing rights of Itlamok. Heartless Pillage, Field of Ruin, New Ghost Quarter, not bad. Fiery Cannonade, good player, uncommon. Herald of Secret Streams. Might see a bit of standard play. Good with plus one, plus one counters. Don't think Merfolk are really there yet, but we might be able to make it work because of that. What are we got in this pack? What do we got? Two more to go in the second third of our box. Storm Fleet Arsonist, Dead Eye Quartermaster, Pirate Pack. Pack, Savage Stomp, Shaper Sanctuary. Ah, I saw the green. I saw the green. I was thinking Ripjaw Raptor, but Shaper Sanctuary can do some sweetness. Good at protecting your stuff against removal heavy decks. Okay. Elaborate Fire Cannon, Imperial Ariosaur, Looting Marauder, King Jolly Sunwing. Kind of like a bad Thalia Heretic Cathar. Or like, I don't know. Bad isn't the right word. Eh, maybe it's a bad Thalia. But it still could see some play. Alright, last pack of the second third, the bulk rare third of our box. Slice and Twain, Duskborn Sky Marcher, Shaper of Nature, there's the Ripjaw Raptor. That is the last, I think that's the last rare we were really waiting for. A uh, solid, like, $10. So we've hit the best rare, we've hit the best mythic, we've hit the second best rare. So I guess we just need the second best mythic. We did get Hawali, which is on the list of good mythics. What is the second best mythic? Is it Jace still? Maybe? I don't, I'm actually, I haven't checked prices since for a couple of days, so... Ooh, opt. Not bad for a common. Alright, we still have a foil rare mythic we should hit. Wanted Scoundrels, Pillar of Origins, Adanto's Vanguard, Sunbird... Oh, heh! Well, there's... 
<laughs> our out of order foil. Oh, wizards, wizards, wizards. So I, I think I see a pattern. If you have a flip rare, then the foil of any rarity comes before it. If you have a normal rare, then the foil of any rarity comes behind it. I don't know how that actually happens. Probably something to do with sheets. Not a bad pack. Sunbird's Invocation, getting some hype for a commander. Foils are always nice for a commander. Legion's Landing, a couple of bucks. Very sweet if you flip it around. We'll see if there's a shell that can take advantage of it. Well, there's a foil rare. Not a Carnage Tyrant or a Jace or something, but still pretty reasonable. Just for commander purposes. Lightning Recruit, Wild Growth, Walker, Thundering Spineback, Argul's Blood Fast. Flipping around into Temple of Eclizolt. Ah, uh, maybe the worst of the flip cards, but still pretty sweet. Can never complain about a greed. Anything that just lets you draw a bunch of cards is all right in my book. We're getting near getting near the end of our Ixalan box. Hey, it's Budasaur. I think it's our first Budasaur. Slice and Twain, Sky Terror, Dragon Skull Summit. So what's that, our third dual land that we fit in this box? I think the average is a like 4.5, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. I remember calculating it for like the fetch lands and stuff that were actually worth a bunch of money, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Sedvest Armor Sword, Dire Fleet Captain, Lightning Strike, another good uncommon. Fleet Swallower, we just need our our Frank Sanity <laughs> for the insta-kill, insta-mill kill, reanimation shenanigans. Definitely something we could see on against the odds. Also, I should say too, this is another card that could end up being worth a bit eventually. Mill cards are so popular and casual, they are always worth more than you would think they would be. So give it like five years and Fleet Swallower will probably be like $10 or something ridiculous. Another duress to add to our growing pile. Front Rebirth, Bellowing Aegisaur, Thundering Spineback, Fell Flagship. Eh. The vehicles from Ixalan are a bit less exciting than the vehicles of Kaladesh Block. Gotta admit. <laughs> like, every single one is worse than every single one of the Kaladesh ones. At least as far as rares are concerned. Alright, Ruthless Knave. Snapping Sailback. Lightning Strike. Rare is... Shadow Carnival. We have a foil. We have a foil. It's still probably not a masterpiece. Ooh, Tashana's Wayfinder. All right, fun limited shenanigans. It does look good in foil. See the nice, beautiful shimmer? The shimmer of the Tashana's Wayfinder. That's not the one I wanted, though. I would rather have the two-drop on common one. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, almost to our final five. Our last chance to open... Another good mythic. We haven't opened a mythic in a while. I think our box is still decent value, though. Pretty happy with it so far. Labyrinth Fire Cannon, Rigging Runner, Air Elemental, Double Up on the Herald of Secret Streams. Eh, okay. Would rather double up on, like, Growing Rights of Itlamok, but Herald, eh, we'll take it. Maybe Merfolk will see play after the second set. So five packs to go. The countdown is on. Pack five, we have Vine Chamber Mystic, Drover the Mighty, Good Dino Uncommon, Call to Feast, Burning Sun's Avatar. Probably not going to be worth anything because we saw the promo in our <laughs> in our buy a box pack. So there's going to be a ton of those floating around, which is going to make it hard for them to be worth any real amount of value. All right, four packs to go. Pack four, the Wily Goblin. Lurking Chupacabra, Bright Reprisal, Blood Craze Paladin for Aristocrat Shenanigans. All right, last three. Come on, one more Mythic. One more Mythic and we'll be happy. I don't even care if it's a bad Mythic. Obviously, like, Jace would be sweet, but just any Mythic. Because I think we're at three Mythics, right? That's a little below the below the curve. Come on, a Speaker, Navigator's Ruin, Autopec Huntmaster, Admiral Bracket Brass. All right, well, we got our Mythic. We did not hit a great mythic, but it's a reasonable one, kind of mid-grade. We also got a foil, Stormfleet Arsonist. Well, you can just build <laughs> Pirate Commander right out of this pack. Gotcha. Two bags to go. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with our box. We hit pretty much what we wanted. One more card of any amount of value would just be, would just put it over the top. What do we have here? Rigging Runner, Steadfast Armor Soar, Walk the Plank, Star of Extinction. Well, we wanted one mythic. We got two. This is, like, one of the least valuable mythics, but still, it is a sweet one. Good for against the odd shenanigans, and it's time. Our last pack of Ixalan from our box. 
So, come on, last chance for something awesome. Deep Root Waters, not bad. Fiery Cannonade, not bad. Imperial Aegeosaur, no foil, no foil, I don't think. Land. Oh, Bishop of Reversed. Oh, it's the Aegeosaur. Oh, uh, all right, well, last card, <laughs> Bishop of Rebirth. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. We'll take it. So, overall, I'm feeling pretty good about our box. I, I got to calculate the value, but I got to say, you probably know the numbers because I'm always counting them up as we go along, but without having actually calculated it, I feel like this was a solid box. I feel like we at least made our money back, maybe came out a little bit ahead, but I'm going to go tally up all the prices, and I will be right back to wrap up our Ixalan Booster Box opening. Alright, so let's wrap up this Ixalan Booster Box, and as I just learned, and you already know... The box was pretty awesome. So all together, we came in at 12602, which is a pretty good price for a box. Above average, I would say. Of course, that is aided by our buy a box booster pack. So we got a Cataclysmic, a Blooming Marsh, a Gonti, and a Lord of the Accursed, which all together were like $16, considering the Gonti and Lord of the Accursed were foils. So Adding those in were at 126, but even without those, just from the actual box itself, because not everyone will get the buy a box booster pack. That's only if you get them while supplies last, essentially, and if your game store has them, etc., etc., etc. But even without the buy a box booster, which those are insane, I definitely love these way, way more than getting a promo. Uh, it came in at 110, which is a great deal. You buy a 90 or 100 dollar box, get 110 dollars worth of value. You can't really go wrong. So. So we started off with a couple of really good mythics. Carnage Tyrant, number one in the set. Hawatli, also near the top. So that's a big chunk of the value. We also ended up slightly above average as far as mythics in general, getting five mythics when, since mythics are slightly rarer in Ixalan than normal, thanks to the double face cards, the average is going to be four, I believe, for an Ixalan box. So getting five is a bit lucky, although really... Our mythics were pretty average in general. We got a couple low-end ones. We got Admiral Beckett Brass as kind of our mid-range one. Got a couple top-end ones. So apart from getting one more than expected, I think our mythic breakdown, obviously we were lucky to get Carnage Tyrant, the single best card in the entire set to open. But apart from that, I feel like we opened fairly average as far as mythics. Like a nice breakdown of low-end, high-end. And then rares, we did do pretty well. We got the three big ones. Growing Rights of Itlamok, Ripjaw Raptor, Registar Alpha, Search for Asconta is also high up on the list. So we hit most of what you want to hit from the rare slot. And then the impressive thing about Ixalan is just how many, like, $3, $2, $4 rares are in the set. Dowsing Daggers and Cupolas and Vanquishers Banners and Primal Amulets and Shaper Sanctuaries and Legion Landings, the Foil Sunbirds Invocation even. And then, of course, three of the rare lands as well, which are between, like, 2 and $4, $2.50 and $4. So, overall, nothing to complain about. We hit well on our Mythics. The buy -a box boosters are absolutely awesome. I hope Wizards keeps doing it. It is a great bonus. It definitely encourages me to buy more boxes, especially on release day, because the value was there. I opened, actually, another one for fun, because I bought a box for myself that I opened off video, and that one was insane as well, with Walking Ballista, a foil of braid, Avana is a mythic. So it seems like those boosters actually have a big chunk of value. I've seen other people getting foil fatal pushes, which are super expensive. So I was very impressed with the buy a box boosters over the promo. So keep doing that, Wizards. That was awesome. But our box was great. We can't complain. We got our money back and then some. We got a bunch of sweet cards. We hit the good rares. We hit the good mythic. So all around, I just, I love these kind of boxes. I would much rather be opening this consistent value, $2 here, $3 there a bunch of playable cards then opening through an entire box going all right we're at 60 bucks we got to hit a masterpiece we're at 60 bucks we got to hit a masterpiece either you hit a masterpiece and everything is good or you don't which is what the odds favor and you know no matter how well you open your box is going to be a bust so i for one am a big fan of non-masterpiece box openings and I'm pretty happy with what we got. So overall, sweet box. Let me know how your box went. If you got one, are you going to run out and grab one now that you know how sweet the buy a box boosters are? Does that encourage you to buy a box? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. 
And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.